Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the Q&A session. Uh, we'll be getting started in just a few seconds. So, so uh, yeah, T hang tight, everybody. We're having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties at the moment. Am I in the wrong room? Oh, okay. Sorry about that, folks. I think we started off a little bit late, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I don't mind. I just didn't know how to invite people or, uh, like, how stage. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> this is kind of difficult. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I'm Anne the Fox. This is uh, Cam Cam, our co-host, uh, and uh, Starly, the artist of the panel. Yeah. Hi. Cam Cam, do you have any questions for our artist? Or do you want to go straight to picking people from the uh, hands? Well, I think that I have to present myself first. I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, why, why don't you start by introducing yourself, Star Starly? Sure thing. Um, hello, I'm Starly, also known as Sony. I'm a Venezuelan digital artist, and I work for the IDW Comics doing uh, cover art. Um, well, I'm also known for being a big Starline fan. <laughs> All right, then. Um, um, do you... Um, Anne, do you have any uh, questions for uh, Starly? No, I think it's just fine to go ahead and start with uh, the the audience questions. All right, let's get into it. Um, so first, I'm gonna call on Radar. Hi, Hello, Radar. Hey, Radar. How's it going? Radar, oh, are you there? You good? Uh, you good, fam? First score, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. Discord, everyone. <laughs> we can fix this. We can fix this. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try calling him in again. Did it work? Well, apparently it's my connection and my microphone that's being weird. Let's go. Oh. It worked. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <Yeah>. Hi. <laughs> I am never doing this on my phone again. I'm going back to my computer. Hi. So, uh, what, what's, your, what's your question? I, okay, so. First of all, Starly, hi. What radar? How are you? I am well. I am currently outside touching grass, as the kids say. That is the best thing I can describe this. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, so apologies for any background noise, really. Uh, but my question is, I want to ask this little fun thing I've been holding off for a while now. There you go. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. Right. So in IDW Sonic. Um, OCs and Sona characters of the actual artists have shown up in the comic book in, as background characters. So, I was wondering if I could ask you this. Which of your characters would be the more most likely to show up as a background character in the comic? Well, so far, I haven't, I haven't really thought about that because uh, once uh, one of my OCs appears in the background, it will mean that they will belong to Sega. So I have to think about what character I want to give Sega. <laughs> but here's a little secret. Amber appeared in the previous uh, in the previous arc. She was a background character. Uh, apologies, my, my, my phone's being weird again. What were you saying? Oh, uh, that I still haven't decided who, uh, what character I want to give to Sega because once the, the character appears in the background, it belongs to Sega. But one little secret is that Ampere appeared in the background of one of the previous issues. issues. In one of the pre preview pages, really? Yeah. Do uh, you know wow. when Silver and, and Duo are having that problem and then Whisper it comes and Lanolin defense duo. Well, Ampere is amongst the crew. Yeah, huh. I, 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 I looked through all of the cameos, but I didn't. I don't think I knew about that one. Yeah, it was That's because me. Ampere was colored in pink <laughs> instead of brown. Uh, I, uh, I see. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I think I may have heard something about the whole background characters becoming like Sega characters and such and so forth. Um, that's interesting. Or maybe, or, hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's what happened when uh, we'll see appears in the background. It doesn't belong to you anymore. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. I, yeah. Well, thank you for answering my question. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. 
Yeah, thanks for your question. And for the next All audience, right. um, for the next audience like the member, next there's answer. only one hand up. So burrito or bur- bori, burrito. 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 Oh. There's no T. Well, there is a T at the end. How do you pronounce your name? It's burrito. Yeah, burrito. Oh, okay. burrito. Hi, Starly. <laughs> Not, nice to finally talk to you. Big fan. Appreciate all the work you've done. Hi, hi, thank you. That means a lot. All right. Uh, well, or, originally I had a question, but it was kind of in the same, um, same theme that the Raiders question was. So I'm going to cut it short. It, it considered like a follow up to their question. So well, I- say you, say you managed to get a character to be a cameo, like a, pre- like, full on you get to see them you get to see their whole body in the backgrounds for like five panels and someone on idw says hey if you want you can have them have like one line of dialogue so what character would you have in those cameos who would have a who would say something and then what would you have them say well i think it will depend on the context of the story for example, if it's a story in Windmill, Windmill Village, I'll ask for Angel to be the cameo. He can say anything, really. And if it's someone in the Resistance HQ, it will be Ampere or, yeah, Ampere. It's a good option. Now, if... I, I know this is kind of <laughs> me fantasizing and, and all that, but... I would love, love, love to see Byte working with Starling, <laughs> but I know it won't happen, but it would be amazing. That's, I don't know, as, as a background character in, he, in, in, an, in an arc with, with him, if he ever comes, comes back, you know, yeah. since he's not around anymore. <laughs> but yeah, it will, be, it will be Amber or Angel. Nice. Uh, thank you for answering. Thank you for your question. Good. All right. So um, let's go on to our next question. Um, Hannah, I choose you. Pokemon <laughs> reference. Hi, Hannah. Hey. Hey. Hi. So my question is, what do you like to draw the most? Oh, well, I think it will be Starline. I love to draw him. He's really, really fun to draw. I also like to draw my OCs and nature. I'm trying to get better at backgrounds, so I'm learning and practicing drawing different uh, natural places with grass and trees and all that jazz, and I think it's really fun. Well, uh, one thing I also enjoy is, enjoy is drawing chow because uh, that was what I used to draw the most when I was a kid. So it makes me really happy. Nice. Thank you for your question. That- oh, yeah, thanks wow. for your question, Hannah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so actually in that same vein, what is the hardest thing to draw when you're doing oh, your work? Oh my goodness. I think it will be uh, anything that consists in a long curved line, like silver squeals, Sonic squeals, that sort of thing is, yeah, I don't know why, but it's super difficult for me. That's why I try to avoid having OCs with, with uh, features that are long curved lines. It's just, I don't know, it's super difficult for me, especially when it comes to line it. It's, it's hard. <laughs> I see equals are the bane of your existence. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Uh, I have. I actually have a question for you, uh, Starly. For sure, go any, do you have any advice to give for any ins- aspiring artists out there? Well, my advice uh, is that, okay, everyone says that you have to practice all the time, but practice alone won't help you that much, uh, just in the long run. You have to also study. Uh, if you look at... Uh, real life reference like pictures photos that sort of things to analyze how the shapes work how the shading works how the light works 
it really helps you to to start translating it from the pictures to the fo to the to the drawings so practicing that part it really helps it helps you to improve to improve nice. all right now starly uh do okay. you have any particular audience member you want to bring up mm, let's call richie all right come on up all right richie hi <laughs> Richie, oh, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. How are you, Richie? I'm doing fine. My question Me is... <laughs> my question is, uh, since you're from Venezuela, you know, uh, how, do, how do you feel about, you know, being an artist from Venezuela, having, being able to reach IDW? How do you feel about that? Like... Do you feel good about yourself? Do you feel like surprised? <laughs> Do you ever thought you would ever reach this? <laughs> I'm honestly really surprised because, you know, since I'm from Venezuela, I thought I wasn't going to be able to be an IDW artist, especially because of the uh, current limitations that Venezuela has. But I'm super, super happy, excited, and I'm still speechless, and I can't believe it. <laughs> it it's, it's just surprising to be the first uh, Latin, America, Latin American artist in, mm -hmm. in the IDW crew. crew. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and as a Latin American myself, I really appreciate that. Let's hope for more Latin American representation in IDW Sonic. Oh yeah, we need more. I can think of various Latin American artists that are really talented and that I would like to see working for IDW, including you. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. So, uh, so thank you so much, Starly, for us, uh, answering my question. I love you so much. You're, you're very good. Thanks for your question. Love you too. <laughs> okay. Next one. This time we're gonna choose Gay Owl. It's your turn. Oh yeah, Gay Owl. Uh, oh, this so there sudden. we go. Hello. Hi. Hi Hello. there. Hello. Um, I am a little shy and I do stutter a lot, so pardon if I do that. But uh, you're fine. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm nervous too. Okay. Good. I'm really nervous too, especially because English is not my first language. I'm I'm struggling here. <laughs> You're no, doing no, you're doing well. great. <laughs> you're doing you're wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so um, my question is, so I, I already have a feeling what you might pick, but if you were in charge for like another like wacky April Fool's game by Sonic, and let's just say, I don't know, it's like a dating sim, who would be the main character and who would be the three love interests of that dating sim? Oh my goodness. Uh, I would like to date... <laughs> Dr. Starling, uh, so it was really obvious, but I don't know, there's something, you know, interesting about the, the idea of dating Eggman. <laughs> Many people don't really know about this, but I'm, a, I'm actually a really, really, really huge Eggman simp. I love Dr. Eggman, he's great. <laughs> so, yeah, either one of these two, I would like to, to date. One of them. Well, that's all I needed for an answer. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, Thank you for answering my question. <laughs> Those are choices. <laughs> let, Those let are choices. Be, be one. <laughs> yeah, those are choices. All right. Okay. Uh, and would you like to pick the next person? Uh, Cyber. Salver. I, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly. There's a Y before the L. Hello. Hello. Hey there. Welcome. Welcome in. Hello. It's Silver. It's the yeah, um, just a normal Silver. Uh, okay. well, hello. <laughs> so nice to, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> well, uh, I have a question. Okay, I, I can't speak too loud because it's like one AM here. So, that's uh, what other artists do inspire you? What other artists inspire? Me? Well, let's see. Um, 
there are plenty of artists that inspires me. Um, Evan Stanley, for starters, I really love how she shades. It's impressive. Um, Adam Bryce Thomas, I really, really admire his art. He is one of the artists I aspire, I, I, I aspire to be like. And Digi Min, Digi Min, his coloring is amazing. I'm super in love with how he works. Um, there is someone uh, that doesn't work for Sonic, but he works for the um, Big City Greens series in Disney Channel. He he's the art director, but he's a background artist. And oh my God, his work is amazing. He's the best background artist I've ever seen. I follow him on Twitter and he always posts uh, tips about how to make, how to make backgrounds, how to tell a story through the backgrounds. And I really want to, you know, be able to tell stories through backgrounds and be able to draw them as a tile as he does. So yeah, I think those are the artists that inspires me the most. Oh, well. Thank you for, for replying my question. Uh, I really like your work. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you too for your question and for the compliment. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Well, there he goes. All right. So, um, Darlie, I think we have some uh, text questions. On, on here. So um, this one is from Michael the Wolf to Sonny. What what would you like to see Sonic spinoff game with Starline as the main villain? Hmm. <laughs> I really, really biased, but you know, I would like to see him interacting with Sage and Eggman as well. And uh, I would like to see the the spin-off game having a good ending for Starlink, you know? Maybe with him being able, able to join the Eggman Empire once more and work, on, work with Eggman. You know, making his dream come true. He has worked so hard to be able to work with, with Eggman, so it's a shame that he doesn't get what he, what he wants. I really would like to see him getting it, you know? Ah, uh, yes. It's kind of nice when um, when characters that are not in the games get a chance to be actually in the games, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. To be honest, uh, when Starling was still working for Eggman, I was really, really hoping that someday he will appear in the games as, a, as an assistant for Dr. Eggman. But, oh well. So, that's oh well. not really possible <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> As far as we know, it's not possible. Well, that's true. Keep that but as we know, I'm still rooting for that. <laughs> All right, All right. Would you like to choose the next guest, Starly? Yes. Sure. Let's go with um, Avro the Avro the Fox. Come on down. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> I thought he left. <laughs> Hi. Can you hear us? Hello. Can you hear us? Can we hear you? Hello. Hello. Hello? Abro, are you there? Uh, let me see if everyone. I can do something real quick. Uh, uh, fix this. Fix this. Hey, uh, it now works. Yeah, now. there we go. There we go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Hello. Uh, okay, so this question is to Starry. When did you first hear about Sonic franchise? Oh well, that's what that was when I was six years old. Um, I wanted a PlayStation. But my parents bought me a Dreamcast and I was looking through the games and such and none, none of them really catch my attention, just a few. So I was playing them. Um, I saw Sonic, but I kind of ignoring, ignored it. I didn't really, it, it didn't really catch my attention until uh, the next day I saw my cousins playing with my Dreamcast, they were playing Sonic, and I was like, oh my god, that's such a cool game, what is that? And I, I gave it a try, and from that moment, I fell in love with Sonic as a game. It was Sonic Adventure, I remember. 
and I got obsessed with it. I would draw the towel all the time, draw tails all the time. And my dad bought me um, Sonic Adventure 2, like some weeks later. And oh my God, it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, that's how I started with Sonic. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. Thanks for, thanks for answering the question. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. All right. I'll see you soon. Thank you for asking question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's man? You want to go? You want to have a go this time? Uh, Nova, Novaka. I'm not saying any of these names correctly, and that's just probably going to end up being a thing. Uh, how, do you, how do you pronounce your name, though? Novika? It's Novika. Novika. It's Novika. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did yeah. it correctly. Novika. Let's go. There. We got there it right go. on the first try. Let's what do you know? <laughs> Great. Hey, hey, everyone. Hey, Starley. What's up? Big, big fan. You know this already. I wouldn't be here with yeah. if it wasn't for you. Uh, so... The question that I have is, uh, you know how in the annuals you have like all these different stories, like just one shot stories. If you had a chance to write a one shot story, what would it be? Oh, my God. Uh, I was totally saving this for the fan annual, but I would really, really like to see a story about Tinker and Bill. You know, I would love to see them mm -hmm. interacting for real in the comics. Uh, I think that their re their re relationship was super, super wholesome. And I really would like to see that being explored way more. Or that, or maybe one like, I don't know, Days in the Face Ship, where they show up uh, Dr. Starline and Dr. Eggman routine together. It would be really <laughs> nice. <laughs> Great, great. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think I've heard you mention the idea of a Tinker comic, which that would be incredibly adorable and heartbreaking yeah, as well. It would be adorable. I really want it. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I really, I really would like to see in the IDW, IDW comics is more Tinker and especially he interacting with Belle. Yeah. Yeah. The whole Windmill Village thing is like what, one of my favorite things in the comics. <laughs> great, great. And it's such a thing that needs a little bit more of like a spotlight too. <laughs> yeah, it deserves it. Deserves. <laughs> great, great. Perfect. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. Thank you. No problem. Always supporting you. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. You, what, what, Moving right next? along. Okay. This one, this next one, this next one is pretty, it has a pretty interesting name. Uh, he goes by the name of Nintenguru. All right. Hello. Hello. Hi, Guru. Uh, hello. How are you? Well, all right. Give me a moment. I think when I had it set up, uh, I think the volume is a bit down on my end, but I think I, I can live with it. <laughs> all right. Okay. So my question is sort of a follow up to Michael the Wolf's question from a bit earlier. Uh, which uh, actor would you like to see voice Dr. Starline in the games? Oh my goodness, oh, that's, that's difficult that because I don't really know uh, voice actors in English. <laughs> so Sorry, I'll, I'll like... give you a hit. I'll give you a hit. Ultimate. <laughs> it's never going to happen, but <laughs> ultimate. <laughs> yeah, ultimate, ultimate. He will be the perfect, yeah. the perfect voice actor. That's for the literally star. his <laughs> name, ultimate, the ultimate voice yeah. actor. He's great. His voice for Starline is just perfect. It's it feels it fits him so well. <laughs> but um, there is an actor in Spanish that makes the voice for uh, for Panda from We Bear We Bear Birds, and I think that voice will fit him really well because it's you know kind of effeminate. It's is really really soft. It's really um sophisticated yeah so i think it will fit dream he fit him really well oh, all right cool and if i had to if i had to go ahead and like probably pick someone uh at least in the uh in the western world uh i would honestly go with willem dafoe <laughs> oh sadly i'm not really familiar with him <laughs> uh understandable not familiar understandable. with him either uh yeah, I would it's say because i I everything I watch, I watch it in Spanish, so I don't really know much about uh, English voice actors. All right, again, understandable. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I was about to say, is that man, isn't that man expensive? <laughs> Can Seiko <laughs> afford that? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't oh, know anything I'm about not him. Really sure. so I, I think don't that's know. probably aiming way too high. <laughs> way too high! Well, thank you for your question. All right, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Okay, so uh, we do see, have a. Uh, well, we do have people hand raised, but we also have some text questions for Starly. Ooh, the Christians. Yeah. Really? Really? Where? Where? Yep. Where? <laughs> I, I pinned them. I pinned them. Don't worry. Okay. You can find them. I pinned them. Uh, a question for Starly. Since you've already made it to IDW and breaking in into the comic industry. Sorry about that. Uh, He's okay. What? What are you? What are your plans going forward? Any other dreams or goals to? achieve any journeys to make art make it in art in a personal aspect or professional one well uh, so far i don't really have a goal when it comes to art because i'm happy where i am right now uh, but there is something in a personal level that i would like to to achieve is that you know i haven't been in a good shape health-wise um, since some years ago and I would like to improve my health my health because I know that if I improve it I will be able to draw more things draw for more time and be able to have more opportunities and travel and that just because right now I'm kind of stuck in my house I can't really leave it or else I will start feeling sick. So yeah, I would like to work in improving my my health. Of course, I'm I'm doing way better right now because uh, back in 2018-19, I was bedridden. <laughs> but uh, right now, I'm I'm not bedridden anymore. I can do things. I can walk around. I can draw, I can use my laptop, things that I wasn't able to. So I'm pretty sure that my health will keep improving and I'm gonna work on that. So yeah, that's my goal. That's very interesting. Yeah, we also got another. We also have another uh, text question. It's from uh, Rachel Sharpers. Did I say that correctly? Um, anyway, to Rachel Starly. Shapers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fractal oh, Shapers. That's it. Fractal Shapers. To Starly, can you give some tips on building a portfolio? Sure. Let's see. Uh, these are the tips that I got when I was building my portfolio. These are directly, directly from the editor from the IDW. He posted them in his blog. Um, the tips are that you have to make your portfolio with your best pieces, preferably pieces with background. Um, you have to make it with uh, around 10 or 15 uh, pieces and make sure that you only include the things that you like to draw, the things that you want to draw, because uh, you know, that's an example of what you can draw. If you add something that you don't like to draw, then the editors and all uh, the people that, that hire you will want you to draw that. And they, the idea is that you are comforta com comfortable with what you're drawing. So yeah, um, for Sonic, you have to make sure that your portfolio has dynamic pieces, you know, drawings, of action in sense um a bar, bar, variety variety you know variety uh, yeah draw plenty of characters make sure to show how to draw as many characters as you can so yeah I think, um, yeah and don't stick to just one character you have to vary yeah because i remember that when i submitted my prof my portfolio the thing, things that the thing, the first thing that the editor said was that um, 
Sega didn't... Uh, Sega wanted to to know how I draw all the other characters because my portfolio had my, my list timeline. <laughs> so it was mine. <laughs> they also need to know how I draw Sonic, how I draw Tails, how I draw Knuckles, the Team Chaotix, uh, Silver, uh, Cream, Blaze, all the other characters. And no OCs. Mainly the... The canon characters. Uh huh. I see. That is that is a pretty good answer. Now let's uh, go back to the audience. Hands raised. Yeah. All right. I think I'm gonna call him one this time. Uh, how about how about a Sonic voice actor? Dang it. Oh. Oh my God. Uh, oh, oh, uh, you you really could let me scare him in the chat a little bit more. Oh, hi, Ultimate. Hi, Ultimate. Ah, what are you talking about, me? Like, I, I was in the middle of visiting somebody, and oh, I, just, uh, I just get, uh, what are you, what are you oh, doing? What are you, why are you talking Sonny about me? Sonny was ask, asked about their preference for a Starline voice, if he was ever voiced in a oh game. Oh, my God. I mean, we all know what the obvious choice is. It's Mike Pollock. Anyways, um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so sorry I messed up on your name, the ultimate. I'm so sorry I messed up on your It's uh, fine. It fine. Be the first time. Uh, yes. Hi, Sony. Uh, how are you? How are you, mate? I'm fine. What about you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do got a, uh, a question for you. Uh, what is your favorite thing about Dr. Starline? And you can't oh, say his voice. Oh my goodness. I love everything about him. Okay, if you could just so pick to... one. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's so hard to choose. You have... Okay, pick three then. Okay. Okay, three is fine. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see his design. Because he's, he's so course. pretty. He's so cute. He's so adorable. I love him. His colors are so good. Eh, it's a it's a coincidence, but when I joined the Sonic fandom, I was known as School Cake, and the color I used for my brand was Starline's uh, Starline sheer color, and it's like oh my god, this character is for me. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Another thing that I like is his personality. He's so I don't know. He's so nice. I I I love him. He's uh, fabulous. I love the way he expresses himself. I love uh, how much he he likes Eggman. I like how passionate he can be. Um, his mannerings. He's it's so nice. Um, uh, what other, what were you going? To, what were you yeah, going you to say? To pick, uh, no, I'm listening. Yeah, one more. One more. Okay, one more. Um. Let's see, this is hard. Um, I think I like his concept. Not the character arc, but the concept. You know, the, the idea that he was going to be an assistant for Dr. Eggman that was so passionate about the doctor, that was basically a fanboy for him. I really, really like that. And sometimes I wish he, he had stayed like that, but... Oh, well, things happen. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. I like how you said his personality was great when his personality is not so great. He is a villain after all. <laughs> He's um, a villain, I know, I, but I, I like think, villains. I, I, I think you've been listening to my take for way too long. Because <laughs> I <laughs> mellowed him out. <laughs> I certainly like mellowed him villains. out. Villains are oh, like my oh, you, Okay, you're a bad girl, kind of. You're a bad boy kind of girl. All right. All right. All right. Well, thank you for letting me ask my question. Thank you for your question. It was nice. And I hope to see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> of course. All right, I, will, later. I will be there. Oh, good. He kicked himself off. <laughs> uh, Cam Cam is ha currently having some. Uh, oh, there you go. It, you're in the audience. Get up here. Get up here. <laughs> Get oh, up here, I Cam. See you. <laughs> But, uh, Night Ray, would you like to come up here and speak and ask your question? You've been waiting an awfully long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Y you guys can hear me, right? Yes, we can hear yeah. you. Don't worry. Hi, Night. Hi. 
Hi. Um, it's nice to see your art again, Starly. I could have sworn I was following you for the longest time, but I think maybe you had remade. Um, yeah, so I, I made a new, a new account. I moved. It was at the beginning of Jolly. Yeah, yeah, because I was like, I, I swear I could have been like following you like for longer than like this year in July. Um, but yeah, it's nice to hear you uh, answer these questions. Um, I have a very basic one. Um, what is your least and favorite blending mode to use in your software choice? Um, the the blending mode to use when it, when I draw it. Yeah, so like uh, multiply, overlay, soft light, that sort of thing. Ah, okay. Well, to be honest, I don't really use that much that kind of of stuff. Um, I use sometimes um addition and multiply for some effects, but that's about it because I don't really explore with that kind of of stuff. Everything I do is just as it is. <laughs> I don't really make uh, use filters um nor effects. I don't know. I don't really know how to work with them, so I just draw naturally. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And and I could definitely tell like with the sort of addition uh blending mode that you use. It it works so nicely with your work and um it's actually really impressive that you don't really use the other blending modes as well cuz usually um I I personally like to explore with them. Um, but it, it's great that you're able to just like use colors so efficiently without having to use uh, any blending modes like that, or, yeah, or, or, or at least that many. Yeah, I think it's also because I use Sight to draw, and my Sight is for 2009. It's super old, a very oh old, old version. It's not updated, and it's very, very limited, limit, limited. But it, it has plenty of limits. In fact, it just has multiply, addition, overlay, and lumia shade as a layer option. So I don't have many stuff to work with, you know. So everything I do, I have to learn to do it by myself instead of relying on on the features that the art program have to offer. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. I, I remember using Sai myself, and yeah, I remember there's not that many um. Uh, blending modes to use in the first place so yeah that's a great point actually <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so it's very very basic and mine is super old so it has ever less stuff <laughs> dang for real <laughs> all right thank you so much for answering my question it's nice to you know thank you for answering and it's nice to see familiar faces in the audience as well so uh thank you and enjoy sonic revolution say uh, thank you for your enjoy. question enjoy enjoy Okay, Starly, would you like to choose our next guest? Sure. Let me see. Um, let's go with Space Colony. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for um, wanting to answer my question. Uh, it's kind of piggybacking off of a previous one, um, but I wanted to ask about your experience applying to IDW, uh, like how you went about it, how you felt having your portfolio judged, if it was like scary or if you had any kind of I don't know, interesting experiences with it. Well, yeah, it was super scary. I remember that when I saw the editor saying that he was uh, accepting portfolios for review, I was super, super anxious, anxious, and oh my God, I didn't want to apply. <laughs> I yeah, didn't I believe it. <laughs> because I thought that my art wasn't ready for it, but thankfully my friends encouraged me to do it. And I sent my portfolio and I was basically screaming <laughs> because I was so scared about what he was going to say. But surprisingly, uh, when I recite, recite the, the answer a week later, um, it was pretty nice. The editor was super nice to me, was super gentle. And he gave me some tips to fix my portfolio and pointed out the good things on it. So I took all the tips, all the tips he gave me and began to work on new pieces for my portfolio, then posted them on it and sent it again. In that moment, he said 
that the portfolio was fine and that he was going to send it to Sega and oh my god I was so excited I could I could not believe it <laughs> and from that moment it was just waiting 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 for months for Sega's answer and the day I got the answer, oh my god, when he said that Sega had approved my portfolio, oh my god, I was screaming, I was jumping, I was celebrating, I was so happy, I could not believe it. <laughs> but yeah, the, the whole process was super anxiety inducing, but it was a really, really nice exper exper experience that I really enjoyed. That's amazing. Thank you so much for answering. Uh, that sounds terrifying, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I think you're really brave. Yeah, it was terrifying. If you see my my conversation with my close friends, you can see them uh, trying to calm me down because I was so scared. <laughs> so, I mean, I would be too. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it was congrats super on scary. <laughs> yeah, congratulations on getting in. You really do deserve it. Everything you've done for the comics has been absolutely gorgeous. So uh, keep up the fantastic work and thank you so much for answering. Thank you much. Thank you so much too. <laughs> yeah, of course. See ya. Okay, I think this person, Nightbird, Hi. let's go. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Well, first thing I want to say, I love you, and I'm very proud of you, and you're doing great, and I love you. <laughs> um, another thing I wanted to ask <laughs> is, um, well, it's kind of like a two-in-one question in a way. One is like general tips on perspective, but another is just how do you go about doing thumbnails? Because it's something that I struggle with like a lot with making the composition look good, and I wanted to ask you about that. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't studied composition at all. <laughs> I don't know, I just, it just come on. And for perspective, I just say, so it's just suffering because I, a little, little secret I have is that I can use for uh, the per perspective grid because it's, it makes me dizzy. So I can really use it. I have to, to, you know, to try to imagine the perspective and then try to fix it and redraw stuff until it looks nice. <laughs> yeah, because I, I really can use the grid. Of course, I have used some lines to help, my, to help me when it comes to making... Yeah, certain things like the floor and such, but not in the whole picture because otherwise it will make me feel sick. Oh, that's <laughs> so, yeah. so valid. Everything I do is just like made I percent. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's honestly just, really impressive, though. <laughs> like. It, it just went it, went it, it up. It's just, well, it's look, it looks nice. Yeah, I'm going to call it a day. <laughs> well, thank you for answering. You're doing great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See ya. Cam Cam, is your mic working? Or are you still having problems? I'm going to take that as you're still having problems. Okay. Oh, poor Cam Cam. But yeah, it's fine because... It's fun because people think I I have studied a lot, that I'm super professional, but in reality I'm just a little dork that that I don't know that tries their their best <laughs> and that doesn't really I, know any about the theories. I don't even understand color theory. You okay, know what? I don't understand color theory either. What even is oh, that? Good. Oh good, your voice is back. <laughs> technology. You defeated the technology. Uh, who's yes. next? Hallelujah. Okay, so I think we're going to take in one more question. Uh, this time it's going to be... Uh, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Uh, maybe Scrabble? Riley, would you like to... Uh, the, Riley, would you like to choose the, the last question? Yeah, Scrabble. Let's, let's go on Scribble. 
Hi. Hello. Oh. All right, my question. Hi, it's only been a long time. Yeah. All right, my question. So I got this uh, question in the back of my mind, like since I was talking to you in like HD, like back in his server. So what did you make a uh, what? Hold on. How did you make a uh, data play in the first place? Like with their inspiration, with her? No. Uh, for bite, my go to see. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, to be honest, Byte, uh, Byte was my Sona. He, uh, they were based on me uh, with my, uh, my looks from 2019 and with my personality a bit exaggerated. So, like, making it evil, making it uh, more grandly, more mischievous, you know. Um, yeah, they started like my son, and like some, like a character that was supposed to represent me in the Sonic universe. But as I started to use Byte, the um, the concept for them evolved, evolved. So they changed it. I changed it. I stopped it feeling represented by Byte, but the love was the same. So I kept developing them until they become their their own character that makes sense that makes sense to me yeah <laughs> so yeah it's love we'll see is when it approves like over time it has that a month like it has all that old age going on like you can see it by your old concepts like you have like more add-ons to add-ons make it look it seems look older as it is yeah, one thing things really change when time passes. Yeah, it's been like that. It feels like a time passed by. Yeah, time time really flies. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that. <laughs> All right, I think that's my question for now on. I hope you have a good day, Starling. And y'all, thank you. And yeah. <laughs> well, I think th this might be a good time to wrap up things, don't you think? Uh, yeah, do you, you have any closing words, Starly? Um. Well, my closing words will be that keep creating, keep working on what you love, keep doing what you love, and try not to pay attention to social media and the the competition for the numbers and all that. Do what you love because you want to, not because you want popularity. And draw what makes you happy. Make sure that the first person that you're trying to make happy is yourself. And yeah, that's that's it. Well, thank you everybody who came in and uh, started asking questions to our to our friend Monty. here. Um, yeah, thank you everyone. Okay. And they, thank you, Starly, for worried. doing a panel and answering thank these you, questions. Starling. Thank you for inviting me. It was fun. And uh, thank you, Anne, for hosting with me. Oh, thank you, Cam Cam, for hosting with <laughs> me. Trust me. And, I... uh, yeah, that's going to do it for now. Uh, we hope everybody has fun at Sonic Revolution 2023 online. Yeah, have uh, fun, be sure guys. To check out Starly's, be sure to check out Starly's uh, little section. Lots of cool stuff there. <laughs> I'm gonna take a look in there. Okay. And uh, coming up next on the Chrono Stage Room, we will we will have Make a Meme. We're all I'll be hosting again along with Dolus. Stay tuned for that. Oh, that means you're not leaving. Have fun <laughs> staying up here. <laughs> I'm staying here for the rest of my life. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Uh, apologies for taking so long. The uh other panel was taking quite a bit longer, but now I am here. Hello. <laughs> Hello there, Cam Cam. Hello there, Dulius. Dulius. Is that how you do it? Dolius. It's, it's uh, Dolius. Great, I got uh, it on the first try. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and should be joining us uh, soon. Real soon. Yes. 
I don't, I don't know I how to invi- invite people to. to. Oh, don't worry, I can do that. You know. Let us see. I guess we'll start with introductions. Uh, Cam Cam, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, I am Cam Cam VA. Some of you don't know me, but I am the creator of a little channel called Diamond Cammy, where I post a lot of memes and uh, videos and stuff, and also web series. And I also have a, a, my very own voice acting channel. Ah, if you can wonderful. check out in the promotion. Uh, the promotion thingy. Yes, our promotional area in the server. Uh, anyway. Today we're going to learn how to make a Sonic meme. Indeed. Well, we're doing a Q&A about Cam Cam and Anne when she comes in and about their work. So hang on tight, folks. Oh. Yes, memes. Yes. We're going to learn from the experts. Somebody in the audience says, oh uh, yeah. boy, here we go. Uh, Jet and Izzy will be with us at some point. I was actually reading the uh, wrong event there. My mistake. Gotta sleep. Things are going to happen here. We're not perfect. Where are they? Ten seconds. <laughs> but, but, um, but in all seriousness, no pressure. Indeed. Let me see if I can uh, get them called up. Where are they? Hello? Oh, I can see you are. Hey, look, everybody. It's the voice of Tails. Who's that? Not me. That's actually all Jet, if you didn't know. Yeah, actually, it was me who did the voice of Tails. I just credit Izzy because it's funnier that way. <laughs> uh, but, no, no, hello. Hey. I'm here. Uh, I suppose I should just probably get into it because I'm five minutes late, huh? Of course. Indeed. Uh, no, Jen, actually, Izzy, why don't we're, you we're just introduce gonna... yourselves? Oh. Well, yeah, why, Jen, why don't you, should you go first. guys introduce yourselves? Okay, yes. Hello, I am Jet. If you're here, I you might know me. But if you don't, I am the guy who makes the Sonic voiceover memes that a lot of people have seen. If you've ever seen a video where Sonic and Shadow argue about how to pronounce dot gif, or if you've ever seen a video where Knuckles gets mad at Sonic for flirting with his sister, or if you have ever seen the video where, uh, what are my other famous ones, Shadow recites the Bible in Japanese, those were me. Uh, and this is Izzy. Who should Hi. introduce herself? Um, I'm the girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's I'm, the girl. <laughs> I'm the girl. Uh, I think that's the funniest thing. Um, but yeah, I just do whatever voices uh, Jet doesn't want to do because, as we know, he does all of them. So <laughs> there's just a couple that he uh, doesn't want to do. So I do those. But yeah, I do mostly Amy and Tails. You probably heard me as like Chris once or twice. Probably only once, uh, and like Charmy, uh, the, the, the more like high pitched voices, the more like gremlin esque type characters. That's me. But anyways, the ones that the voice. voice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy is also a variety streamer who streams like four times a week. So if you want to check out her Twitch stream, you definitely should. Twitch.tv slash Izzy Bell with two I's and two Z's. I can't even chill for myself, so he has to do it for me. I- yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so I'll work well, on it. Yeah, we, we'll work on it, Izzy. We, we you got you, you got to get to it, but I'll do it for now. I, uh, one day so, I will. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna try to make a meme, not start to end, because video editing is a long and tedious process. But I am going to go over all the stuff that I think about when I'm making a video on my YouTube channel, and then I'm gonna get you guys to come in and help spring ideas and see if we can't come in with a funny video. I hope you guys will consider the things that I say during my explanation of how I think of a video. But if you've got some crazy idea that you've been dying to tell me for months and you finally found your opportunity, that is okay too. But we will get to that point. I do want to start by explaining how a jet video gets made first. Uh, So I think there are, eh, give or take, four primary things that go into thinking about a jet video. The premise, the audio visual presentation, the voice work, which I'm considering a separate thing from the audio visual presentation, and the secret X factor, which will be the hardest one to talk about. So let's start with the not difficult one, premise. Premise is actually the most difficult one, but not to talk about, it's pretty simple. What's the idea of a video? What's the joke? What's the thing it's saying? What are we making fun of? 
That is always the hardest part of a video to come up with. If you've ever done any creative work, you know that trying to solidify a premise is probably one of the most difficult parts of writing anything. So my premises come from, you know, a few different places. Sometimes I just do a meme. Like if someone made a funny image and there's a meme, I want to make a skit out of it. Like, bro, are you flirting with my sister? That was an Elite Sonic fan meme before it became a video. Those ones are not too difficult to make. And if you've got any funny Sonic memes, you might want to save them up now to post later. But I do think you can go beyond just, you know, dubbing over the meme, adding your own twist to it. That's what makes it fun. There's that, that's when it becomes a, a skit based on a meme. That's like the one where Shadow recites the Bible in Japanese. The original image was just a picture of Sonic saying, will you date me? Breathe if yes. Recite the Bible in Japanese if no. That's funny, right? It's a funny joke. I think it came from a text conversation somewhere. But I thought, okay, but what if someone actually did recite the Bible in Japanese in response to you asking that question? And that eventually gave birth to that video, which I really shouldn't say gave birth to that video. That's an awkward way of saying that. But that is how that video came about. Sometimes it's a, a Twitter post that I make fun of, and then sometimes I actually come up with full skits. If you've ever seen, for example, Team Chaotix becomes YouTubers, there's no meme that that's based on. That was an idea that I had that I thought it would be funny if Team Chaotix tried to make money by becoming YouTubers that spin, spin off into a whole premise. All those things are pretty different in terms of how they come about, but there are common questions that I ask when I am working on a premise. The first question, and most important for my style of video, is it funny? That is a really difficult question to answer. Whether or not something is funny is completely subjective. And sometimes even I don't think it's funny until I made it. Like the video where... um where Omega asks Shadow, what is Ligma? I thought that was the stupidest idea I've ever come up with. I didn't think it was funny at all, but I decided to make it anyway. And then after I saw it, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's kind of funny. I don't know if everyone agrees with that, but that one is outstandingly popular. So I like to think that that one turned out pretty well. That's one question. Is it funny? Second question, since I'm making Sonic memes, does it work with Sonic? I'm kind of loose about this. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who would want to stay very faithful to the characters' personalities and make sure that everything feels like it's something that could have come out of a Sonic game. I, I feel like getting the vibe right is important. I don't always exactly adhere to the personality of the character, though. I don't think you'd ever hear Shadow run into a room and disparage speedrunning as a waste of time. But that is one of my most popular videos, and I think it evokes the idea of Shadow's edginess and sort of contrarian nature that he had back in the time that people enjoy it. So if it feels right to me, if it feels like it could work with Sonic, I go with it. Sometimes, though, the skit is, of course, just conceived as a Sonic skit, right? Like, I made a video where Mephilus uh, tricks Silver into thinking that buying NFTs is a good idea. And I can see that skit with exactly that scene of the game in mind. Which leads me into my third consideration when I'm thinking of a skit idea. Is it possible? I'm not an animator, so when I make these parodies, I do have to use existing footage from somewhere and edit it. Usually a game, but sometimes it could be Sonic X or Sonic Prime or even the Sonic movie. If I have an idea, I need to find a scene that actually works for the idea. Uh, which is usually not too bad because Sonic is a long-standing, extraordinarily popular franchise with his hands in all sorts of multimedia. So he, is, he has had conversations in all sorts of environments and places and to different characters. But if it doesn't work, it's at that point that I'll try to alter the idea or play around with it to go with things I have that do work. For example, I made a video called Hey Guys, I Found Sonic which is a bit where Knuckles brings in quote-unquote Sonic, which is actually the Avatar character from Sonic Forces and tries to trick everybody into thinking that, yeah, that's the real Sonic. We can do this, guys. I originally wrote a whole script with that premise because I knew I wanted to do like the fake Sonic Avatar joke. 
But after I wrote it and started editing it, I had to rewrite the dialogue to belong to different characters to fit the footage that I had. Like I had written dialogue for Tails in that one before I realized that Tails is not even in any of the cutscenes that take place in the HQ except the end one, which wouldn't work because Sonic is also there. So when it comes to to coming up with a premise for the video, I have some extra challenges in terms of actually finding relevant footage. But premise is, of course, the baseline for every video. You need a good premise. You, you, you need an idea. It doesn't have to be super complicated. Some of my notes for ideas that I made up are really, really simple. Sometimes I write out almost the entire skit before I even write out the entire skit. Uh, like, for example, a simple one that I came up with was... Um, oh, I probably can't say that one. We're trying to keep it family friendly. Uh... Another simple one I came up with was I thought of a joke where Sage is Eggman's AI generated daughter. That was all I wrote for that one before I actually started writing out the whole sketch, which became Eggman's AI generated daughter. Sometimes I write out the idea and have like 20 notes about specific jokes I want to tell, like in the video where Black Doom calls Shadow cringe. That one I practically wrote like 12 punchlines before it actually became a thing. What I'm trying to get at is with the premise, the creative process is really flexible and it's going to vary a lot based on what you're trying to do, but you need to make sure it's solid when you're working on the next steps. Like the audio visual presentation. What I'm making is parody. And there's something I read in a book once. It's called How to Write Funny by Scott Dickers, who was the founder of The Onion the parody news website. And yes, I think it's very funny that his name is Scott Dickers. Um, he said that parody is generally more funny the more closely you imitate the original work. So for me, I'm pulling footage directly from the original work. And I think that is a big part of what makes the videos charming is that they feel like they could come out of Sonic Adventure 2 or Sonic X or Sonic Unleashed or whichever game it is I'm using as the base footage. That's why I pay so much attention to getting the right footage after I've established a premise. You can absolutely do parody and jokes without having to exactly copy the original style. Uh, there's a very popular YouTube channel called Solid JJ. You guys maybe have seen him. He writes amazing parody skits of Pokemon and superheroes and Columbo and all sorts of stuff. And his style is a lot more, uh, simplistic visually it's just text on images but it works because he gets the the tone and writing and voices down really well uh, so it, it uh, what i do is i try to imitate as closely as possible but i think in general if you try to evoke the spirit of the thing that you're parodying that does make it funnier than just like you know throwing a sonic character into an edgy situation or whatever not that that can't be funny but if you make it feel like a sonic character is in an edgy situation in the style of sonic adventure 2 for whatever reason that makes it funnier to people who know the original source material uh so when when i'm doing this i pay a lot of attention to the game's presentation i always get the correct subtitle font i always try to match exactly the way the music is mixed in transition so if i'm doing a sonic adventure video i always make sure the music hard cuts when it goes out because sonic adventure doesn't have music fades at all I, I try to get the right sound effects from the game they're little details but i think that they add a lot that's not something you guys are going to have to worry about as much when you're helping me come up with this premise because Doing the audio visual work is my job, but if you're aspiring to make your own parodies of things that you love, even Sonic the Hedgehog, I do recommend putting that extra effort into trying to imitate the thing that you're parodying, or at least the spirit of the thing you're parodying, as much as you can. Those little details go a long way into making it funnier, even if your jokes and writing are exactly the same. The third component of a Jet video is the voice work, which is a little bit different than the audiovisual presentation. It's a part of it, of course, but it's something that I pay a lot of attention to because it's basically one of the only things I'm doing that's completely original in the videos, right? The footage is edited from existing things. The sound effects and music are edited from existing things. The subtitles are copying an official style. But the voice work is is me. I don't use any AI voices. Please never use any AI voices. I don't use text to speech. 
It's, it's all me and Izzy. This is also the hardest part for me to give you advice about if you're inspiring to do this, because I'm not a professional. The extent of my voice work basically is the YouTube channel. I can offer you a little bit of advice in doing a good character impression, though. Not all my impressions are great, but I think some of them are okay. And my trick is very simple. I listen to the voice a bunch. I try to imitate it. I record a take. I listen to it side by side. How different am I? How much do I sound like the original take? How far off am I? Based on that, I revise it and then keep trying to do that until I get a decent impression going. Some characters, it's not that hard. Well, I'm not going to say not that hard, but for some characters, there might be really obvious uh, speech patterns you can pick up on. For example, if you've ever played a game with Jason Griffith in it, which you have because you're at a Sonic convention, uh, you've probably noticed Jason Griffith has a very particular inflection he uses when he's speaking. His voice goes up and down a lot when he's talking. I'm not even changing my voice to say that. I'm literally just going up and down, but that alone actually does a lot to sell a Jason Griffith voice. Pay attention to stuff like that if you're trying to do a voice impression. Izzy also does a lot of voice impressions, so if you have any thoughts here, do feel free to say so. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel like my voice is already as close as it is to, like, for example, Amy. I, it's not that much higher in my register. Um, it's just, like, she also has a certain, like, cadence to her voice. Um... And I even catch myself if I say something in a very certain way. I'm like, ooh, I already sound like her. And it scares me <laughs> sometimes. Um, I mean, I said that in the car, which at one time I was like, oh my God, you just sound like Sonic right there. <laughs> um, it's just it, a lot of it is intonation and inflection. Um, and I think that's really what sticks out about these characters the most is like the way that they speak. Um, for example, I don't think I have the greatest tail impression ever. Um, I think I'm just really good at figuring out uh, how the voice actress, I forgot the one from like Sonic X era. I forgot her name exactly, but uh, he has such a specific way of speaking that if you can just get that down and have a raspier kid voice, um then like you could you could sound like him it's it's really just making sure you get those those little speech patterns down if you want to um impersonate a character on the other hand if you want to do like a, an original voice that's a whole other like can of worms um and that gets into like actual voice acting which i have some experience in uh, but not a lot, so I'm not really your girl to be asking. But, uh, yeah, I would just say, like, if you do want to do, like, impressions and whatnot, really study the speech pattern of said character and also the voice actor. Like, see what they have done and, like, what they specialize in, and then you could also then try to match that. Like, I did a lot of research when it came to, like, I wanted a voice in between Lisa Ortiz and Jennifer Dullard uh, for Amy. And I kind of found something in between that, uh, which I really, really like uh, for my Amy impression that I do. But listening to Lisa's um, Amy is like the biggest thing because Lisa's Amy, she has, again, a very specific speech pattern. Um, and it's it's kind of hard to imp like do an impression of. But once you get it down, I think you've got it down. But yeah, that's that's all I really have to say on the matter. <laughs> yeah, what what I will say in addition to that is even if you cannot do a perfect impression of a character and you still want to make a parody, it is absolutely fine. And the reason I think that is because it is voice acting, not voice acting. Does that make sense? What mm. matters more, I think, is delivering a good, earnest or funny performance than it is getting an exact impression of the character that you're doing. I think it will stick in people's minds a lot more if you focus on the acting part as much or more as you focus on trying to get the voice right. If you have a an okay sonic impression like me, but a really funny video idea, I think that works better than having an exact impression. Well, not better. If you can do an exact impression and are a really good actor, props to you. But if you can't do an exact impression and you still want to make parody, go for it. Seriously, just do it. You might be surprised at how much people are willing to buy it if you're 
if you're honest about it and give it a good performance. Other than that, uh, stay hydrated. Don't hurt yourself. That's true. Make sure you're following proper voice technique uh, because like, especially when it comes to like more raspier voices, I found myself if I don't like warm up and do proper like technique for my voice, uh, I will hurt myself and you don't want to do that at all. Uh, so drink lots of water. And what Ryan Drummond told me once, he said, get lots of sleep. It helps more than you think. So. And Mike Pollock's advice is get throat lozenges uh, because he's <laughs> constantly doing a raspy voice in those That's recording true. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the three like concrete things that I think about when I'm making a jet video. But there is unfortunately a fourth one that is the hardest to explain. X factor or appeal or whatever you want to call it. There is some secret to making a video or a story or a drawing or whatever that resonates with people. I have no idea what it is there. No, not not the Musk X Twitter factor, the the X factor <laughs> like the TV show. <laughs> the, the, I think I liked it better when they call it Twitter. Yeah, I liked it better when they called it Twitter, too. I, I've never actually heard anybody call it X like other than as a joke, I've never been talking to someone in real life and they're like, hey, man, did you see that X post the other day? That shit was great. No, no, that has never happened to me. Honestly, the only X that matters right now <laughs> is Sonic X. Yes. Yes. So Sonic X may be important to us when we are making a meme in a few minutes. But X Factor. I don't know what it is. Sometimes you just watch something and you're like, Gosh, that's really good. I really like that. Yeah. And you might not be able uh, to articulate why you really like that. That might be X factor. What is appeal? Really? I have no idea. I can only give you one piece of advice in harnessing X factor. And that is to be genuine, to be yourself. Because as far as anything you make, the one factor that's going to be common between all of it is you. You are the person making the thing that you make. Obviously, that's a self-evident statement, but it's important to remember because that is what makes your work yours. That doesn't mean that you have to not you don't have you can't be sarcastic or cynical. Those things might be what you're actually thinking. But what's important is that it is what you're actually thinking. I think that people can tell when something is not true to the creator or when it's being when it's a cash grab or when it's just trying to capitalize on a trend. I think people can feel those things. And I think that does change the way people perceive the things that you make. I can't tell you what the secret to making something appealing is because I haven't figured it out myself. But I can tell you that putting yourself into it gets me a higher success rate than not. So when you're talking about making a meme in just a couple of minutes, tell me something that you really think would be funny, that you really want to see, that that's, that's something you like, something you think. If it's something that bothers you in a Sonic game that you want to parody about, if it's something deeply personal to yourself and you want to frame it in something as a joke, uh, maybe just be careful about how you frame that because I'm a stranger. Don't tell me all your deepest personal secrets. It, it, it just make it something to? that you want to see that you like something that you you enjoy that's something else i think about when i'm making a video would i watch it i'm my target audience when i'm making a video if i think something would be funny i want to make it and if i like the end result that's a successful video to me i don't really care about the view counts and how many people leave comments and all that stuff because i'm my target audience that helps too if you would not watch the video that you're making, it's not likely that other people would watch the video you're making either. I think same with any story, same with any drawing, same with any artistic work or even meme that you make. If you wouldn't like it and you're the one making it, it's going to be a hard sell, I think. To everybody else. So have some confidence, be yourself, whatever that may be, and make what you want to make. So. Premise, audiovisual presentation, voice work, X Factor. 
of those, today we're going to be working with Premise. Izzy and I will be doing voice work to the skit that we come up with, and hopefully we stumble into the X Factor. But don't worry too much about the audiovisual presentation. If the idea that we come up with today is good, again, that's on me. I'm the guy who's got to do the audiovisual presentation. I'm the guy who's got to edit the video. I could talk forever and ever about editing the video because that process takes forever, but without showing you anything, I, I don't think that would be an especially interesting topic right now. Okay, one anecdote. Uh, I was making a Star Fox video a few months ago, and I was trying to replicate exactly the way the text boxes appear in the game because there's no mod to like make the text boxes empty or anything. So I spent a long time studying the footage, and it was only when I realized that I was counting the number of frames that the static box appears before the character's face takes over the panel that they talk from did I realize that maybe I'm going a little bit overboard on attention to detail. But that's what I think makes it funny. So maybe there is no such thing as going overboard on attention to detail. You do what's right for you in your meme. But today we're not going to do... Well, we are going to do your meme, but we're going to do your meme with me. My way. My we're doing way. It my way. <laughs> You're you, you belong to me. So, given what you know about how to make a jet video now, I want you to go into the Chrono Stage Room text channel and post anything that comes to mind that could make a good jet Sonic meme video. Literally anything. <laughs> I, I want to see as much as you can throw in there. It, it sounds silly, but if you if you spitball a lot, you're bound to run into a good idea. I already saw. You can make a skit about Twitter being renamed to X. There might be a premise there. What about Jet. a video of Sonic challenging Tails? And oh no, not the one thousand no. spider. No. <laughs> no. One thousand spider. Yeah, I got ta I got tagged in this yesterday. Do you want to? <laughs> I actually don't know if I can post this. Never mind. I'll send oh, it to you no. myself. <laughs> <laughs> I just had this thought of like uh, Sonic characters arguing about like the what what is the best game <laughs> like right now. <laughs> Yeah, I that that that's definitely a premise. I have I almost did a video like that once, but with Pokemon, actually, I almost made a video where Team Rocket argues about which the best Pokemon generation is. But it was falling in a little bit of a weird like on the boundary of whether I'm breaking the fourth wall place or not. So I changed the skit a little bit to make Meowth hate. Hoenn because of how much water there is there and then kind of made that like the joke about him not liking Gen 3. But see, there's an idea there. Maybe a Sonic character could be arguing about like which locations they like the least and most. And that's kind of like a metaphor for the game, right? Like they're getting upset about Pumpkin Hill because of how difficult it is to move around. And then, Eggman, and then they start making an argument. <laughs> yeah, but the argument is like sort of like based on the things that actually happened in the game. Kind of like the skit where Sonic gets arrested for all the stuff he does in... Um, in City Escape, all the crimes that he inadvertently commits just by playing the level. Eggman playing, being pro AI is a video I did, actually. Well, kind of. I made a video where he makes an AI generated daughter. I never did a skit where he's explicitly like trying to extol the benefits of artificial intelligence and AI art. That could be something there, too. What AI would, what would, would Eggman say? Especially yeah. like Sage. What yeah, what, what would Eggman art? say in favor of AI? What would his argument be? What, what 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 would Eggman think about AI? I mean, he'd definitely be pro AI. He's an evil guy, first of all, and that's evil. But secondly, he's <laughs> <laughs> he works with machines and robots and literal AIs with Sage. Uh, yeah, they they could be a joke. They're like, how could it be evil? It made my daughter, and then it just cuts over to Sage. But and she's literally like <laughs> planning on like his downfall yeah, like don't worry ai is not evil it made my daughter and then it cuts over to sage and, and sage is like you must fail for the for eggman to win or whatever she says in sonic frontiers she doesn't say you must die at any point does she i don't think so she's more just like you're going to die that's like her thing <laughs> you are going to die like that yeah. <laughs> just love that oh that was good thank you sage uh you're like, you're like uh you're going to hell <laughs> Shadow has a line where he canonically says that you're going straight to hell. He says that in <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog at the end he of the true neutral path. Damn a lot. He does say that. That's yeah. That's, that's very real. 
That's lore. Damity, 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 think, ding dong, damn. <laughs> I think Shadow the Hedgehog has like some of the most uh, like swearing in uh, any of any games. It's probably the only swearing, if I'm remembering correctly. Only I, I swearing. I don't think there's any other Sonic game where they swear. Game. There is one where they blaspheme. Amy says, oh my god, in Sonic Heroes, but I don't think that counts. That doesn't really yeah, count. Yeah, that, that doesn't really yeah. count. That, that could... Maybe there's, a, maybe there's a bit there. Amy says, oh my god, and Cream and Big are super confused because who is god? Yeah, who no, I was going to say, what if, what if... Wait, 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 wait. But that... Oh. Doesn't that imply... Okay, yeah, it's like it implies that God is real in the Sonic Sonic <laughs> universe. But also, isn't it? Isn't God real in the Sonic universe? And we talk about this on my stream where you were talking about oh, like right. Vector, Vector is religious. This Vector is, canon. is like religious, yeah. In the Japanese manual for Knuckles Chaotix, uh, it says that Vector believes in the existence of God. I mean, there is chaos, the god of destruction, so that's that's true too. Yeah, that's true. But aren't there multiple gods in Sonic? There's Gaia, there's Chaos, there's the End, who I guess is a deity. There's so would it make more sense to say, oh my gods in the universe? Is that the premise of the bit? Like, which god? And Amy doesn't know which god it is because she just said it. And, mm. uh, and like, every god in the in the Sonic franchise could, like, uh, come in randomly and say, you rang. <laughs> <laughs> just their voices off in the distance the yeah <laughs> oh my god and then the ends like layered multi-voice like yeah <laughs> and she's like no, no not you i'm not talking to you go away and then, and then <laughs> oh does gaia have a voice i don't think gaia has a voice does it no i mean it's el the elephant sounds yeah <laughs> it's the elephant sound. so i mean same as chaos so chip Chip has a voice. Chip is technically a god. Oh, Mephilus is part of a god, right? Yeah, yeah. Mephilus is part god. Well, Me half Mephilus god. Half of <laughs> Iblis. And he has a voice. He does have the, a voice. So maybe maybe a I'm gonna I'm gonna write this one down actually, because this one is definitely one we could we could come back to. Um oh shoot, what have I done? I opened I opened a different Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Amy says, Oh my god. Big and Cream have no idea who that is. Subnote: the other the gods are like you rang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's keep that one in mind. But Amy has her queen. <laughs> but I, I, I'm I'm thinking Amy. Maybe Amy needs a reason to say, "Oh my god." Yeah, that's in the game. I think it's from like a, a loop. I think it's like a rail loop. And she's like, oh, my God, she's, you know, it's like we for the same reason. Tails is like, whoa, my head's spinning. Oh, my head's spinning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Look and at also, also, speaking of Tails, you, you remember, uh, Isabel, how you were mm -hmm. mentioning about uh, Sonic 06 and uh, you didn't remember uh, uh, the name to a uh, voice actor. Yes. Is it perhaps Amy Pallant? I think, yeah, that's her. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, her, it yeah. has to be. That's actually my favorite Tails voice actor of all time. Yeah, she's she good. She does, good. A good. she does a very good Tails. She's really yeah, good. I, 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 do, I do miss Corey Bringus, but he went through puberty, so he can't come <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, no, indeed. Oh, no. <laughs> a sad face from B-Fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um Oh, this image of Sonic. Okay, I just had an idea based on this image of Sonic saying I want shorter games with worse graphics made by people who are paid more to work less. I'm not kidding. What if he said that and then it just turned into like Sonic Adventure or something on like the lowest graphic settings? There might be a yeah. bit there. Oh yeah. Like just he's in a game, Sonic right? So if he blast. said he wants a game with worse graphics, that's directly going to affect him. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> that could definitely be something. Uh, t t how about Sonic characters celebrating Christmas in October or July? And they can, they can oh do a fight about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad either. And I'm already thinking, um, didn't the Sega Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure have a Christmas DLC? Isn't there like uh, a Christmas tree model in the game already that you could like? use it for them to argue about that's there's something Indeed, there there is and it actually plays music when you touch it 
uh, depending on the DLC, I think the Christmas 1998 music just plays like just da 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 Well, for the 1999 music, it plays the uh, acapella version of uh, Dreams Dreams from uh, Nights into Dreams. I am amazed that you know that all off the top of your head. I'm very impressed, actually. <laughs> My night's knowledge is I'm pure. kind of impressed, too. <laughs> Anywho, would it be all right if I invite somebody on stage to help out with some memes? Uh, sure. Who might it be? Uh, the only person who has their hand up, Sega Garfield. Sega Garfield. Up. Ah, Sega Garfield. Oh, wait, there's I another person with their hand up, too, but we'll, we'll save that for later. Well, hello, Hi. Sega Garfield. It's been a <laughs> while. I returned. Uh, w- what's up? What do you got to say? Well, I was <laughs> well. You already heard about my idea, but I thought I could dabble in a little bit more. Like, <laughs> which, which, which one? Oh, was this the characters arguing in uh, about Christmas in October? Yeah, like they get into a huge argument about it. All right, <laughs> like who, maybe who, who are you picturing here? Who's they? I'm thinking Tails because he's like a little kid, <laughs> or maybe like not. Maybe Amy because she's really excitable. And then like Sonic or Tails Sonic or like your shadow. Tails to yeah. <laughs> and then like Shadow or that'd Knuckles. Be, that'd be really good in this bit, actually. Like, yeah. Like, and like, like and then like Knuckles is like, well, actually, because he's he'll just state the obvious, right? Yeah. And, the, and then he's like, Tails is like distraught. And no, no, dude. Knuc- then, Knuckles would believe in Santa too. <laughs> and then Sonic gets into it. Then gets mad about him about him saying that <laughs> <laughs> and that leads <laughs> into the argument like, what do you mean santa's not santa? real take it back <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is actually kind of great hold on there's this like who else would put gifts under the tree <laughs> <laughs> and then kind of uh, like <laughs> kind of a good bit cuz it also implies that like gifts to show up under knuckles's tree it's Rouge. It's Rouge putting them there and not telling. Yeah, Duncan. exactly. It's like a, it's like a master. It's like a little plot to get the met in the master emerald, but somehow failing each time. <laughs> oh, I, I, I kind of really like funny. this character. The characters talking about Christmas idea. This is definitely like there's there's a lot the here you can do it. with the Sonic characters. Yeah. I also and think I'm it's- thinking like after they calm down and stop arguing, it's like. They touch the Christmas tree. And it turns in it, the song that plays is "All I Want for Christmas Is You," and they immediately go back to fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Amy like works in retail and has been hearing that song nonstop. Yes. <laughs> oh, that could be the that, that could be the part where where she says, "Oh my god!" I was and then say the, that the, yeah, oh exactly. God. And then, <laughs> Oh man, yeah, combining the two skits. That's almost there's something there too. Oh, that's so good. Also, whoever don't don't worry about talking about AI as a subject matter. It's mildly controversial, I know, but uh I think we all I, kind of are on the I do videos about controversial page. topics sometimes. I did a video yeah. where Eggman takes over the US healthcare system. That is an extraordinarily controversial topic. Oh yeah, without a doubt. So uh, no sweat it. But maybe for the sake of the risk. panel, yeah, we can uh, we can stick with something a little more like you know, arguing about Christmas or Amy uh-huh. thing. Oh my god, and nobody knowing what that's talking about. Thank you though, Sega Garfield. <laughs> this idea is actually this is this is blooming into something. I can feel this. This is not bad at all. I like the I like this character's it's arguing. All about coming her. together. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so if ooh. All right, all right. So let me let me list off the ideas that we have right now and see if there are any that we really really like although i'm really i'm, I'm feeling this christmas one but i'm I gonna the christmas one I'm, is really I'm gonna, funny yeah, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna list them off anyway uh we have eggman is pro ai which is a pretty funny idea i do like that one a- it is the one where amy says oh my god and cream and big just have no idea who god is and then all the other sonic gods start showing up to answer her call i um, just thought of a funny bit that yeah. i think in my hit hey <laughs> it has to do a kfc kfc yeah KFC. That, <laughs> do, like, do go on is there is there something that happens in kfc well there's a there's a 
there's a Christmas tradition in Japan where people eat oh. KFC for Christmas dinner. And like maybe Shadow would say like what's wrong with celebrating early? You get to k- eat KFC early. Or he just or shows up like with that. a bucket of KFC. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and then, eating a little uh, and chicken wing. And then into the argument of have going like maybe then why KFC? Why not go to Popeyes or Chick or Chick Fil A? Yeah, it definitely could work off something there. The, the conversation way. even worse. Yeah, that that could be like the moment before they break and realize that they're. Oh yeah, Sonics is a fast food place, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh we, yeah, we, we have that. We have the uh, Sonic wants worse graphics in games, and then gets exactly what he wishes for. <laughs> There's the. Of course, the Sonic characters arguing about Christmas in October. Well, like or in July. Yeah, or in July. Or in July. That can make it even funnier. <laughs> it is October right now, though. So if I were to make this video, I mean, I guess it'll be November by the time I was able to actually make this. But yeah, this is. Oh, yeah, I think uh, Christmas in July sounds better. True. Yeah, it does. Then I, I feel like publishing it in the same month that they're talking about is also. Yeah, that's that. That'll take you a while. So realistically, it should be Christmas in July because that's a, that's kind of a thing of its own. Had another idea regarding Amy saying, "Oh my God!" But it would likely be going into religious territory. I mean, I'm not opposed. I, I, if you're going to say something like super Listen, controversial or disparaging, I'm your religious can... trauma uh, expert. I, don't worry. <laughs> it, Izzy will relate to the religious trauma, but uh, I mean. As long as we're not doing anything hateful, I, I'm not really opposed to, you know, <laughs> topics like that. I just don't want to do anything that's like, you know, we're in a very uh, big panel with a lot of people here. I don't want to say anything that's going to like upset people. Oh yes, and a thousand spiders too. Uh, th- this was a they premise love that I the thousand spiders, Jet. Th- that I don't... never heard of. What's yeah, don't, that? Don't, all don't about? answer the question right now because this topic is something I wrote a four-page thesis on. I can show it to you guys later. Would you allow 1,000 intelligent spiders into your home <laughs> in exchange for $1 million? <laughs> Just think about no, it. Well, thank you. I mean, Just if mean, they're intelligent and they know what I say, they obey me, level. then yes. No, no, they don't obey you. They're, they're specifically <laughs> conspiring against you. But, but, but I don't want to go on this topic because I might start reciting my four page thesis on how I would defeat the 1000 intelligent spiders. And we really don't oh. need to do that right now. <laughs> yeah, let's well, not. I have my own. Well, I have my own ideas. I don't want to go into them. Do do tell me about them at some point. <laughs> Shadow, 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 would write a thesis. Shadow, <laughs> d- Shadow would write a thesis on how that. No, Shadow would just use Chaos Blast. He's like, he'd see a thousand spiders and just use Chaos Blast and kill them all immediately. Shadow doesn't have anything to worry wouldn't about. Care. <laughs> okay, so so Say. of the ideas that we have, Amy blaspheming, the graphics worsening, Eggman's pro AI, and the character celebrating Christmas in the wrong <laughs> month and arguing about it. Which of those ideas are we feeling, uh, all of us collectively, you guys in the chat, too? I'm feeling the Christmas one kind of a lot. Right take a now. vote. <laughs> Definitely the Christmas one. But I actually would like to get one more person on stage, if that's all right with you. Oh, yes, please. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, they had uh, their hand raised for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, Quite a while. Yeah, yeah, our arms uh, are probably Michael getting tired. Solo. Come on up on stage. Your arm must be getting tired from having raised it for so long. That's my line. <laughs> I just Please, flew in from the, Discord, and boy, are my arms. Uh, <laughs> Hello, okay, Lato. Um, well, thanks a lot. Uh, okay, I, I don't want to get personal or anything, but well, uh, I don't know if Jed remembers me, but I was one of the many people who messaged him about making a fan up of some of his sketch his sketches. You're making a what about my sketches? Uh, a fan up, a Spanish fan up. Oh. I see, I see. Oh, Did, I, I must have given you permission to do that then, because I think, I think, yes, I, yes, that's, yes, that's by the awesome. way, uh, yes, by the way, I didn't use them. I couldn't access the mega archives you sent me because, well, it it sent me directly to the page, like it didn't open the archives for me, so I... I did what I was originally planning to do. I downloaded the video and I used an AI that separated all, all the. Well, I turned the I turned the video into MP3. Then I separated the MP3 using a AI so I could do the voices myself. 
All right. I impressive. I I I'm sorry that the mega link with the video without dialogue didn't work, but I'm glad that it worked out for you. You'll have to send me the dub if I haven't seen it already. Uh, okay, that's fine. I do, I don't want I don't want to be in attention. No, oh, but I I, I appreciate I appreciate anyone who wants to dub my videos into another language. You're welcome to do that. I love seeing oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. And I have a, a a folder on the internet of a bunch of my videos with everything except the dialogue. So like it's still got the music and the background sound effects. So if you ever want that for dubbing purposes, just send me a message to my email or Twitter or something and I can send you that yeah. folder. Yeah, spread nice. the humor around the world. It's it's very cool to, to see it translated into other languages. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. On on the topic of the panel was did you have a video idea or did you just want to say Hi and thanks. Uh, well, well, uh, about I could I could contribute something to Sega Garfield's ideas. Like I have something, but because I actually proposed something uh, about it, but that I was gonna use for a separate video, but it was gonna be in, in the style of comic panels, like you know the ones like Random Goon. Right. Yeah. I, I, well, I I've seen Random Goon's videos. Those are uh like he 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 does he, he does the voices and then uses like screenshots from the comics as like the the visuals instead of like you know editing a cutscene or whatever. He's extremely talented, by the way, Random Goon. Yes. So, well, I'll check him later. Yeah. So I don't know if this is a good idea for a video. I think it's pretty. I mean, it it will be funny for a few seconds, but then it will get very tiring. Which I actually posted about it and where. I actually realized that Black Doom's voice sounded a lot. It sounded a lot like of all characters, Cookie Monster from Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. John Schemmel about that. <laughs> just Shadow, just like like that. That could be like a, a joke in a longer video, like Shadow, like you know, whatever Cookie Monster, and he walks away and. Black Doom's like, what? No, actually, I guess if he was Cookie Monster, he'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, it, like Shadow teases him with him for a while and in order to defeat him, so Black Doom explodes, but like, it will, I mean, like you say, for a simple joke, it will work, but overall, it will just get very tiring. So uh, it, I was actually planning to use it as the final punch line where my idea is that Black Doom returns and to get re get his revenge, but Shadow has another plan, so he takes them to uh, to see the Disney villains. But even the Disney villains think he's pathetic. <laughs> I th I think if that sounds like a funny idea to you, you should try to make it. That'd be a lot of fun. Yes, so, but yes, that's what I'm having. But that's my idea. But well, so I'll, I'll actually add that to my list too. Black Doom is pathetic to every other villain. It's a pretty good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my so what I was going to propose is now that we were on the subject of <laughs> of the Christmas video, I know it's gonna get a bit controversial, but like my idea is that one of the Sonic characters, preferably a villainous one, turns out that he he says like maybe we shall never celebrate Christmas because that's against what Jehovah wants. Wait, and like <laughs> the other characters are like, wait, you're not Jehovah win this? Oh, you you could have one of the characters not being not celebrating Christmas at all. Actually, that would <laughs> that would really work in the premise. Or maybe being one of the characters being Jewish and celebrating uh, Hanukkah. Yeah, yes. when is Hanukkah this year? I actually actually don't know. I don't. Yeah, end of December. Know. Oh man, yes. Hanukkah Bad. is the evening through December seventh through Friday the fifteenth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow is Jewish. Shadow is Jewish. Shadow is Jewish. Shadow, Jewish. <laughs> Shadow uh, Professor Gerald would probably be. I don't even know. I get. Is Eggman? Does Eggman have a Christian upbringing? This is a whole idea in and of itself. Oh, that's a good idea. Eggman has some sort of religious background. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then he sees chaos and is like, wait, that means there's more than one god. Which means that everything... That, well, let's not get into that territory. That's a little oh, bit... No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little bit. Let's not go there. <laughs> so, like, I don't really want to make fun of the Jewish, I mean... No, no, but, we don't want to, we're not trying to make fun of anyone's religion. That's no. not the play here. Yes, but, but I mean, like, my idea, well, for the Jehovah's Witnesses, like, 
it's not to make fun of well in a way but it's actually like i i actually came up with this philosophy that you can make fun of anybody if that person is an asshole uh, uh, okay sorry for the word <laughs> Oh, watch, watch the oh, language. Yeah, be Let's careful. We don't allow swearing in, in this convention. <laughs> yes, but I mean, okay, what I mean is you can make fun of anybody if that person is a joke like you. That's why you. It's that's why I think it's acceptable to make fun of, say, Donald Trump or Nicolas Maduro. Sure. Yeah. If anybody is a jerk, sure. Yeah. So, uh, fortunately so, for us, the Sonic characters are not real, so we can make fun of them as much as we want. But yeah, in yeah. terms of... So in terms okay. of making fun of let's let's avoid making fun of people's religions in this. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's focus on the skit right now. We've got five minutes. Let's so, wrap yeah, yeah. as much right. of this as we can. Let's yeah, let's wrap this up. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let, let's, let's come let's to a decision on this. And... Here we go. Here's the premise. Somebody is celebrating Christmas at least a month too early. Who is it, guys? What Sonic character would be celebrating Christmas in November? Uh, I suppose Knuckles. Mm, Knuckles is all right. Yeah, I mean, like, so excited. Honestly, that he's I think ready. it should be Cream or Tails. Cream would be good. Cream. Would okay, be yes, good. yes, Cream. Like, cream. she's a li she's a little girl. I was just I was saying Knuckles because, well, of his recent portrayals in games, not counting so Sonic Front Frontiers, and where they portray him as dumb. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. we don't um, want uh, Knuckles to beat him in this. So, how, so uh, how about Tails because he's way too excited. I would like to uh, propose also Charmy because B fan said Charmy because he's like literally. Oh, yeah, kid. Charmy. I forgot mm. about him. Yeah. <laughs> True. I'm also Charmy could get super this. excited. Um, hmm, it would be like a. I, I think we could pull from Sonic X footage, especially if we're trying to incorporate so many characters. It's just a little hard because. Yeah, that's what uh, I'm thinking. They don't really have like a Christmas episode. Yeah, um, right now I'm thinking of Sonic Adventure with the Christmas tree model that they have. Yeah. Right. So let's yeah. just include those well, characters. There, there is a model of Cream in Sonic Adventure DX. I do know there's a that mod true. for that. Let's focus on the characters that are there for now, just so we can crank something out here and I can revise it later. Tails. Let's say it's Tails is the one who's okay. so yeah. Let's say it's Tails. Yeah, it's Tails. He's an excitable kid and he, he's got like some logical explanation about, about why he would do this. Tails. Okay. So Tails is Tails is like he's in Station Square. He's sell he's got the he's setting up the Christmas tree. Uh someone else say Sonic. Humming comes jingle along. bells. Yeah, yeah, humming jingle bells. That's good. <laughs> and then someone else comes up. Sonic. Sonic comes up and yeah, he asks Sonic. him what he's doing. And Tails says he's yeah, he's setting up he's celebrating Christmas, right? Or he's getting ready for Christmas. And Sonic's like you know yeah. why it's it's November, whatever day of the November it is. November so, the first. Yeah, it's, no, it's November the first, and Tails is like, "All right, all right." So we need to think about now. We have a premise that what is the progression? We have the we want to do the joke where Knuckles finds out that Santa's not real, right? That's that's definitely mm -hmm. something we've got to include. You would say Tails would be just so like whimsical, despite being as smart as he is. He'd be like, "Don't you know, Sonic, that if you set up Christmas early, Santa will put you on his nice list, no matter what." Something <laughs> like that, right? That's that's good. That's oh, that's really that is good. a good impression. Maybe yeah. that maybe Sonic is the one that reveals Santa is not real. Yeah. And then that's when Knuckles comes in because he's like also helping Tails. Yeah, and he's exactly. like, "What? What do you mean? Santa's not real." <laughs> oh, it's like Knuckles and Tails are setting it up. <laughs> and then Sonic's like, "Uh oh!" Like you know, he has this moment of, "Oh shoot, man!" Well, what if it was like, what if Tails says that and Knuckles is like, "Yeah, we got to set up," and then Sonic pulls Knuckles aside and it's like. When are we gonna tell him that <laughs> Santa's not real? And then Uncle's like, Santa's not real. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> and then Tails is like, what, "What do you mean?" Yeah, because Knuckles says it too loud. Sonic's like, Shh, "No!" And then Tails is like, "What do you mean?" And he's like, and "He's like on the verge of tears." He's like, "What do you it's, mean?" <laughs> and he starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean I did all of this for nothing? <laughs> and then, <laughs> like, Amy, then. <laughs> Amy could like come in and uh, like comfort tails a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah Amy, Amy, Amy would do that. that she's the one that's in the presents. 
<laughs> Since she's the one who has the retail job. I looked up to Eggman Slay. I thought it was a brilliant machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, okay, that's that's already a pretty good like baseline. That's that's a, that's a really solid joke. Honestly, that's funny. Like, Knuckles not knowing Eggman is real, spoiling it for Tails. Like that alone is like the start of a whole skit. Is is pretty pretty good. A- Amy coming in like, oh my god, Sonic, why did you do this? Even though Knuckles was the one who said it. <laughs> like, oh my god, you Sonic! You rang! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot, god, we can't. <laughs> yeah. Gamma. What about- Alright, so we have a minute. Yeah, so, so then, uh, then yeah. we, you know, I, I can build off that. And we can we can build it a little, but then like, what if it is as it ends? They look up in the sky, and there he and it's is. It's like it's like Eggman instead. Yeah, exactly. It's like Eggman look, dressed up as Santa Claus. Legit. Look, there's just Eggman to play now, and it's just the egg carrier. <laughs> <laughs> Eggman they, drops they, down, but what? Shadow, what does he like, do? Santa, it could be like a shadow. There could be like a shadow of Santa Claus, but then they look up into the sky, and it's Eggman all along. Yeah, Maybe there you go. Maybe Eggman would just be diabolical and just play all I want for Christmas to see you on the, on the egg carrier for everyone to hear. Because <laughs> he would be that type of guy. Time he for would. everybody to get into the Christmas spirit. All I want for Christmas we don't want the egg carrier to sue us. And your destruction. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is your destruction. <laughs> yeah, like, that'd be even better. Poorly overdubs the song. Oh, yeah, well, for Christmas is to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot you can do with that. Okay, of, well, of this, of what we have, I really, really like the beginning where where they accidentally find out that Eggman is not real. That is definitely a strong premise for a video. I think we will not have time to write the entire skit, but if I write it out right now, Izzy and I can perform the beginning of that skit for Eggman isn't real. Holy shoot. That might be the plunge. That might be the punchline. And then Eggman, <laughs> yeah, Eggman hasn't so. been real this whole time. <laughs> They're all little Delulu. Yeah. He <laughs> would definitely say Delulu. Okay, hold on. Let me just write this out real quick. Give me, give me like two minutes to finish up my panel so that we can. Yeah, go ahead, Beetle. So, say an idea while I'm typing this stuff out. I'll, I'm right. here. I will entertain in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my yeah, job. Re- read anything that comes in. <laughs> entertain us. That yeah, is... because we do have to end the panel very mm-hmm. soon. Yes, very, uh, very soon. In fact, we have to. Okay, I will. F- I will finish this up in thirty seconds. Izzy and I will read what we have, and then we'll call it there. Okay. If that is that's all right with you guys. Yes, please. All right. I, I'm I'm currently mm. typing as we speak. All right. I can't believe how involved I was in for this one. Appreciate Me neither. Yeah. Uh, take Garfield, take but back to the really audience cool. now. Imagine. Uh, take care. Take it, Garfield. All right. Thank you. Oh. This one. Um. Someone said last minute idea. Beetle Ye. Imagine if Silver walks in last minute holding a cropped out peppermint mocha from Starbucks. <laughs> you know, honestly, he would be such that guy. And I think Amy is a pumpkin spice girly, personally. Like, if I had to project on these characters, he's definitely a peppermint mocha kind of guy. And Amy's a pumpkin spice girly, for sure, for sure. Speaking of which, we actually, uh, Jet and I did a stream last week, actually. That was last week? Oh my god. Um, where we made food from the Sonic cookbook, and um, it was actually really good. I was very shocked. Uh, and we actually made mac and cheese, like a Silver's mac and cheese. Um, it was very, it was actually really, really good. Um, so I think based off of not only the cookbook, he would. Like and just his character in general, I think he would definitely be a peppermint mocha type of guy. But that is all. The pasta was fantastic. You're the you're so right. Stellar. I, I I made the water boil over though. I've never been so embarrassed. It just, it happens. Uh, what, it just, what are you I, supposed I felt to like do? such a dummy. <laughs> well, what do you do when? Uh, it's, 
Anyways, I do. I mean, not that I'm here to shill the Sonic cookbook, but if you, <laughs> I, 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 dude, I vouch for it. Real, honest. It's it, because no, it's it's actually genuinely very good. Kuya in the audience has also made the chili, and it's good, right, Kuya? Like it's bussin', and I mean that. I didn't think so because I thought it was gonna be. Oh, I see. You just messaged me, Jet. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> we only have the beginning of the skit for time reasons, but here we go. Izzy and I are going to perform what we've got of the idea based on these the suggestions that we've got from the chat. Here we go. All right. Pic- right. Picture, picture yeah. the scene. It's Sonic Adventure, Station Square. Tails and Knuckles are working on the Christmas tree in the middle of the plaza, setting it up. Sonic walks up. He says, oh, Ryan Drummond. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, Tails, what you doing? I'm setting up for Christmas. In November? Yeah, Knuckles said that if you set up for Christmas early, Santa puts you on the nice list. That's right. Uh Uh-huh. Knuckles, can I talk to you a sec? Yeah, what's up? Sonic pulls him aside, tucks him in. So, uh, when are we going to tell Tails that Santa's not real? Santa's not real? Huh? Santa's not real? (laughs) Ah, (laughs) jeez. That's a good start. That's a really good start to a skit. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot, actually. (laughs) <laughs> beautiful all right what well cool yeah, i'm gonna flesh that one out that's actually really good <laughs> Th- thank you all for your suggestions aside from that one all the ideas that you've come up with here today are, are pretty good and i i definitely want to work on some of these so i appreciate you all for getting the spirit and uh the spirit of christmas <laughs> yeah and the spirit of jet the spirit of christmas <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I hope I hope you all had fun bouncing some ideas off me, and I hope you will get to see the videos that you have suggested become real in the near future. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, cool. Thank you all for coming. Yes, thank right. you. Thank you, thank Jeff. You. Thank you, me. Yeah, thank you for oh, having I us. Sorry you went over time. I re- actually yeah, remember you. I actually remember um, myself meeting you two at Sonic Revolution. Oh, is that right? Oh, oh yeah. that is right. I remember now. I, I, re- I recorded you for a video. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That did happen. I remember that now. Don't remember yeah. exactly what I said, but I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, well, I see this you is Camp NBA with Jet and Izzy, and this is Sonic Revolution. Yay! Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see you all at Sonic it. Expo. Hmm. I, I probably won't be there for Sonic Expo, but I will see you next year. All right, cool. I'll see you guys when I see you. Any of you in the chat? Hopefully I see you at Sonic Expo. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of Sonic Revolution online. See you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. How do I leave? <laughs> Where's the button? How do I leave? Oh, there it is. Bye. <laughs>